So this is um, my attempt at a uh, brief and uh, really, you know, attemptedly like not overwhelming um, overview of AI um, that kind of gives you the tools that you need to, um, you know, kind of just cut through all the flowery language uh, that we hear around it right now without being, um, you know, feeling like you're, you're sidelined or like there's some boundary where you can't cross because, oh no, that's like technical, that's AI. Um, I think oftentimes or pretty much always that's like just not really um, a valid argument. And so I think it's just, um, you know, the goal of this is to kind of equip you with the tools to uh, see through um, when that's happening. Um, and yeah, so I guess to start, um, you know, there's this <laughs> wide open question of what even is artificial intelligence? Um, you know, I can tell you as, uh, you know, someone that I guess, you know, is an AI researcher, quote unquote, um, no one's really sure what that phrase refers to. Um, it kind of like, you know, in a, uh, like common language, common parlance, like way, right. Kind of just refers to any computerized system that like, you know, when you see it in action or kind of like, you know, can witness its decisions, um, it seems like there's some like intentionality there or like uniqueness, um, of processing, right. Uh, it just, it looks like intelligent in some sense. Uh, and you kind of what, what you'll find is that this is also how, you know, kind of startups, uh, industry, um, you know, folks that kind of want to, to build up the hype of AI, uh, that, that, that's how they use it as well. And so it can refer to any number um, of, you know, kind of various uh, computational tools, methods, um, systems. Uh, and yeah, and so it's, um, it's, it's hard to define, uh, but we, you don't really need to <laughs> oftentimes. Uh, I think what's often, like what's usually more helpful um, is just kind of like looking at, you know, kind of um, some themes of like what's actually out there. Uh, and I think uh, kind of what we've seen recently, at least in, especially in the last decade, is that most of the quote unquote AI systems that are being uh, employed and deployed by industry or government um, are actually examples of uh, machine learning, which does have a slightly narrower definition, but it's still one of those words where it's like, well, okay, or phrases where, what does that mean? Um, and so this is uh, my attempt at a um, fairly simple yet concise uh, and, you know, kind of hits on all the key points style of uh, definition. And that is that machine learning uh, uses historical data to find patterns that lead to that success. Um, so there's kind of, you know, it's still kind of confusing. So we'll we'll just step through and kind of break it down. Um, and, you know, this is, this. I tried to have this apply to as many things as possible. Some things do fall outside this range. Um, but I think in our conversation today, you'll see how many things kind of actually do fit under this umbrella. Um, yeah, and so we are going to, uh, step through uh, what this machine learning definition means uh, through an example. Uh, and that example that we'll be looking at today is uh, reviewing resumes. Um, so uh, a this has kind of been like a, a common like running example um, in the like AI ethics responsible AI space um, where there's this question of, you know, if you're trying to automate the review um, of resumes, how do you do that in a way that is, um, you know, like effective, fair, uh, efficient, um, and yeah, and so we'll kind of look at, you know, what that actually might look like in practice. Um, so to start, uh, going off of this definition of machine learning, um, it uses historical data. Okay, so what what does historical data mean for a resume review system? Um, and so let's see what what data sources you know do we have to possibly choose from. Well, so you know first there's external data sets um, of resumes maybe, <laughs> uh, right? I think when when folks are kind of starting out and trying to build uh, a new machine learning model, uh, oftentimes you know 
data collection is expensive. And so you don't want to collect your own data. Uh, and so you try to use existing data sets, um, which you know can lead to a lot of problems. Uh, but I think especially kind of given the sensitivity um, and personal information and resumes, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find uh, any type of external data set. Um, OK, so what do you do instead? Uh, you have employee resumes. Um, you probably still have those on file from when they applied. Um, but an issue there is that you know that's not really enough data to start to try to generalize um, in any broader sense. Uh, you know, kind of like what what patterns of success look like. Uh, machine learning does require a lot of data. Um, you know, various methods require various like kind of orders of magnitude of data. Um, but generally speaking, you're not really going to have a great model, uh, or you know, you're not going to be able to train a system uh, or develop a machine learning method without you know a, at least around like a thousand data points or so. Um, and yeah, so maybe an option instead is using resumes uh, from prior job openings that. Um, you know, where we've had people had people apply, uh, and for whatever reason, we held on to those resumes. I still have access to them. Uh, you know, maybe we can use those to to build a system. So if we combine the the resumes from our employees, you know, with all the other uh, applicants that that were not hired, uh, you know, maybe that's enough data that we can start building this system. Cool. So that is the part of the data question for you know kind of what goes behind machine learning. Um, secondly, we have to have a definition of success. Uh, so this is you know what we are actually training or you know trying to build a machine learning model uh, to do. Um, and yeah, so we have to ask this question of ourselves if we're you know trying to build this machine learning system for reviewing resumes, what does that like successfully reviewing a resume? actually look like? Well, uh, you know, we might have X number of resumes. Uh, and we just want to say, um, you know, this one is a good candidate. And this one is a bad one. Um, and sorry, I think I actually, uh, no, okay. I think I, I'm missing a slide here. But anyways, uh, and so, uh, Okay. Uh, when you're trying to uh, define the success, um, oh, sorry, I just got so thrown off by not having that slide. I don't know where that went. Uh, but, okay. Uh, sorry. Let me just uh, think for a second where I was. Okay. So uh, when you're trying to define what a, you know, like the best uh, candidate in a pool of uh, resumes is, right? There are all these different factors that you could optimize over. So, you know, you might have, uh, you know, best fit for the team or most qualified uh, or most potential for growth, um, right? There are all these different kind of standards uh, that we, we kind of, or these different uh, conditions that we're looking to satisfy when we're hiring someone, um, but you know th those are pretty difficult things to quantify. Difficult things to you know go go through resumes, try to review, try to figure out like you know how do I tell the computer that this person has high potential, right? That that's pretty difficult. So what you often do instead is you do the easier thing of saying well. I don't want to define all those things. That seems really hard. Instead, I just want to say, this is what a good resume looks like, right? And then this is what a bad resume looks like. Um, and so in our case, because we are using, uh, you know, data from our company uh, where we have the resumes of people who we hired and the resumes of people we did not hire, maybe we just say, okay, uh, the resumes of the people that we hired, resumes of the people that work here, those are good resumes. So those are like the best candidates of the pile, right? Um, and so now that's our objective. 
uh, is find people who essentially look like, you know, these, these resumes. Um, and yeah, so then once we, um, once we've done that, once we've kind of decided, okay, here's our goal, here's our data source, then comes the actual, uh, you know, kind of machine learning, quote unquote, part where you're actually, you know, deploying algorithms, uh, training a model. Um, and so there's this question then of like, you know, how do you actually find patterns? Um, and so what that, um, what that encompasses is the thing, you know, this, this uh, nebulous notion of uh, training a model. Uh, and I tried to kind of simplify this uh, as much as possible. I don't think it, it, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually need to be that complicated. Essentially, all training the model means uh, is that you have some input data, uh, which in our case is just the resumes. Um, you have the model, which, uh, you know, this is where uh, all the various algorithms uh, that you might have heard of kind of come in of like deep learning or you know, neural nets, uh, uh, linear regression. You, there are lots of buzzwords <laughs> that fit in that little or in that middle part of this diagram. Um, but suffice it to say that you know you just kind of have the input data, you run it through the model. Um, the model generates some kind of predictions. Uh, so in this case, you know, it says, oh, for this resume, I think it's a good one. For this resume, I think it's a bad one. Um, and then you uh, compare it to uh, what you call the, or what uh, machine learning practitioners call the ground truth, um, which in this case is just, uh, you know, whether or not that person was actually hired uh, by, by our company. Um, and once you've kind of done that comparison, um, you can kind of run the results of that comparison back into the model. Uh, and the model, this is where the learning quote unquote happens, where the model uh, is changed to get closer to generating uh, the, the ground truth outputs. Um, and yeah, so, so we go through that process. Right of of training this model, creating this thing that you know now we are able to uh, take some data, you know, take some like we can post a job listing. Um, we uh, take in uh, a number of resumes, right? And now we want to review them. Uh, what kind of patterns do we actually find with that? Um, well. <laughs> uh, Perhaps to no one's surprise, if, if this is how um, we approached machine learning, right? Uh, which it, it, this is this is the standard approach. But you know, in this case, if this is just what we did, um, most likely this is what we ended up with: uh, just a tool that recreates some um, existing form of discrimination uh, that you know we just we were trying to, to get rid of, um, but ended up reinscribing. And so what this actually means, um, you know, at the level of the model, uh, or in terms of, you know, like what, what was actually learned um, is, you know, our, our model has honed in on, on words that are, um, you know, kind of generally more macho. Uh, so words like execute and captured. Uh, where it's, and it, and it kind of de-emphasizes or it, it, um, uh, it like, you know, it, it kind of, it, uh, sorry, just, uh, you know, it, it, it makes um, resumes, it gives resumes a lower score, right? If it finds uh, words like, uh, you know, women's blank club, like women's chess club, right? Or, you know, some all women's, women's college. Um, and, so we have to ask ourselves, you know, kind of where, where did things go wrong? Um, and simply put, we really just expected way more <laughs> from machine learning than uh, it's really capable of. Um, a common, very common desire uh, behind the deployment of AI systems is to do things like making decisions more objective. 
um, right? And to kind of resolve these problems of bias and inefficiency um, by, you know, kind of building up this, this technical uh, oracle of sorts, right? That can see through, uh, see through the haze and, you know, kind of make the best decisions. Um, but think back uh, to earlier parts of, the car, or of this presentation, um, to how many subjective decisions uh, we actually kind of had to make in getting here. Uh, so, you know, in terms of the data that we used, um, you know, we went with resumes uh, from prior job openings. Um, but what we were trying to do was, you know, push push towards a different, better, you know, more fair world, right? Uh, but in doing so, we only we only showed our model or machine learning system data from from this world, right? Uh, and so there's this thing where you know machine learning it, it can be helpful in identifying trends, uh, kind of picking up patterns, right? Uh, in what's um, you know, kind of what's happening in the data, but it's not going to resolve those trends on its own. It's not going to, you know, see that data and be like, you know, oh, you know, you were being arbitrary in optimizing for this. So, you know, that's actually not important. We're going to, you know, kind of uh, like, I'm going to focus on something else. It's like, no, it, it's just going to recreate uh, kind of the history uh, historical decision patterns. Um, that that we've already seen uh, and similarly you know if we're looking back at the um you know the objectives uh of machine learning um and you know or the objectives that that kind of went behind uh this this model that we built um you know we we went with this option of you know kind of defining the best uh applicants as um, you know, the applicants that we hired, uh, right? Uh, and so what we do with that is we're we're just kind of telling the algorithm, uh, you know, all you know, like all those decisions that we made uh, that kind of got us to be like you know, in this case, a, a predominantly male workplace. Um, see if you can copy that, right? Like we ended up defining the objective as the thing that we were trying to avoid, right? Uh, because of, uh, you know, it, it's, it was too difficult to, to put it um, any other way. And so we just, you know, kind of went with the easier option of, uh, you know, assigning yes or no labels to, to individual resumes. Um, yeah, and, and I think this is, um, this is really a very common trend um, where, uh, the the issues that that we find um, as we're you know kind of trying to build uh, systems um, or you know kind of introduce AI to the world, right? Like we, we find uh, find these issues um, and we try to turn them into social problems. Or so we, we try to turn these like social issues that we find into technical problems. Um, and so this is a, a notion that's been discussed. Uh, by various scholars, um, it, it goes by different names, uh, but uh, you know I think two of the most um, prominent ones are Evgeny Morozov's uh, conception of techno solutionism um, and Meredith Broussard's uh, techno chauvinism, uh, which both of these are kind of just pointing to uh, how when uh, when there is this kind of overwhelming hype around technology, around AI, right? Uh, every, you know, you, you have this hammer and every problem starts to look like a nail, right? Where you just, you want to apply this uh, wherever you can, you know, it could be the solution, you know, it can like be the answer, right? Uh, and so you turn all these social problems into technical ones. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, one of the, the core things to just be aware of and to look out for uh, when, when kind of delving into uh, like what, what these impacts of um, AI and machine learning might be. 
Um, yeah, and so I think at the end of all this, right, we can kind of ask like, you know, how important is understanding the, the technical details um, of a model uh, when, you know, kind of figuring out what the impacts of an AI system are gonna be uh, or when, uh, you know, doing the kind of this process of, of cutting through the hype. Um, and I, I think really the answer is, it, it's just, it's, it's, not, it's not very important. Oftentimes what you can do um, is you can look elsewhere in this pipeline um, of machine learning. Uh, this is, there's a lot of kind of extra words here. Sorry, I, I, you, don't, you don't need to delve into that, but like machine learning is just a lot of different stages or, you know, like it, it's, uh, it fits into a um, system of decision-making that has a lot of other stages. Um, it's always in some kind of institutional or social context um, where there are other factors at play. Um, where, you know, there are people deciding, uh, you know, what the objective, what the goal of that system is going to be, where there are, you know, entire infrastructures uh, set up to, you know, collect and supply the data behind the algorithms. Um, and so, you know, when we're, when we're doing this work of trying to figure out, um, you know, if, a, if an AI system is likely to cause harm or you know, if it's actually gonna be beneficial, right? Uh, we can kind of, instead of jumping straight into the black box of the model, right? And trying to figure out, oh, but like what's gonna happen here? How's it gonna use the data? What kind of you know, uh, patterns is it gonna find, right? Oftentimes what we can kind of do instead is we can just look elsewhere in the pipeline and get a really good sense um, for what's likely to happen. Right. So if you look at the, the sources of data going into a system, um, right, you can kind of find what history uh, is going to be repeated. Uh, if you look into the, um, you know, kind of the political will that goes behind implementing these systems. Right. Uh, if you look at you know, kind of the, the forces that are they're pushing for the development of them. Right. Oftentimes uh, there will be some kind of like uh you know definition of success uh that that is embedded in um in those efforts uh and so with that i think you know we can just focus on on those parts uh and oftentimes come out with a pretty clear uh and cogent uh critique for um you know what, what a ai system is likely to accomplish